you are hoping that Barack Obama will be a little bit flexible, take some advice and not stick to that 16-month deadline? Let me speak very frankly with you. I don't think that. I, I'm sure that uh, President Obama, as a young man, as an intellectual man, will be flexible. I, I, he is, even with those who consider enemies of America, he thinks that there will be an, uh, another way to talk to them. What about a friend, like a friend country like Iraq? So I'm sure that he will be flexible and he will listen to us also. All right, let's talk about that, uh, that interview that Phil Black, our reporter in Baghdad, had uh, with uh, Jalal Talabani. Uh, joining us, our CNN senior political analyst, Gloria Borger, our CNN political contributor, Tara Wall. She's deputy editorial page editor of The Washington Times, and our senior political correspondent, Candy Crowley. They are all part of the best political team on television. Gloria, what do you think? 16 months, we've been hearing that a long time from uh, Barack Obama, the amount of time he says the U.S. needs to withdraw its combat forces from Iraq. But uh, Jalal Talabani is hoping that this young man, in his words, will be flexible. You know, I think um, Mr. Talabani may have stuck his foot in his mouth uh, in this interview. I don't think it's it's wise uh, politically, diplomatically, uh, to tell the president-elect uh, that he should be flexible on a, a promise he's made for the last two years to the people who voted for him. Um, and I think that the way he said it was sort of a little condescending in a sense. He's a young man, I, he'll be flexible, he'll change his mind. Uh, uh, not so wise. Yeah, not so diplomatic. Candy, what do you think? Right. Well, I, I think, first of all, that, that there always was in Obama's rhetoric about Iraq this little tiny wiggle room. Not that he doesn't want to get out because he does, but saying, of course I'm going to listen to commanders on the ground. So, uh, obviously, Will, but I think the broader picture here is people are still trying to figure out what sort of president that Obama is going to be. Everyone has sort of uh, looked at him and seen in some ways what they wanted to see and I think that is true uh, nationally as it is internationally and I think you're seeing a reflection of that and also you're seeing a reflection of what international leaders like to do which is kind of uh, push out and and put something out there uh, in the public and and try to influence uh, the next incoming president. The entire world, Tara, wants to know what kind of president that Barack Obama is going to be. And and as we heard from intelligence officials, including the the, the head of U.S. intelligence, uh, there's going to be probing. There's going to be testing. Even President Bush today suggested the U.S. during this transition period has to be alert. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why the Bush administration has really focused in its efforts in this transition process to. Uh, you know, give him briefings that have a lot to do with homeland security and security issues. Uh, those are the most pressing issues on the table right now. So I think they want to make sure he's up to speed and understands uh, all the threats that are out there and everything that he needs to understand coming in. Um, and, and it was Joe Biden himself who said that, you know, this man is going to be tested internationally with a crisis. And, uh, and so I think, you know, there are going to be questions about, there's going to be enough time to talk about timelines and all of those things. Uh, and cooler heads will prevail. But uh, we will see in, in the weeks and months to come uh, how he's going to respond to these issues. He's, he looks like he's off to a good start, though, and uh, immediately starting to name some of his staff. Yeah, I think that's important, uh, not, not wasting any time. Uh, Gloria, Joe Lieberman, will he uh, remain part of the Democratic caucus in this expanded Democratic majority in the U.S. Senate, <laughs> or will he leave on his own, go become a Republican in effect, or will he be kicked out by the Democrats? Well, those are the big questions, and as you know, Wolf, he, you know, he met with uh, uh, the Democratic leader, Harry Reid, today. My Democratic sources are telling me that there's a real sense that uh, Joe Lieberman's not going to remain chairman of the Homeland Security. Security uh, committee, that's for sure. But I think they have to decide, for example, what other committee assignments does he get? Does he meet with the Democratic caucus? Uh, you know, they're all pretty angry at him because of his uh, speech at the at the Republican <clears throat> convention in which he took the Republican line against Senator Barack Obama, was quite tough on him. So I think they're they're trying to find a way to get this done where it looks like it's kind of mutual. But it's sort of clear he's not going to remain chairman of that committee. All right, but uh, uh, Candy, what do you think? Will he continue to caucus, as they say, with the Democrats? Well, I, I think that they would let him caucus with them because the more votes, the merrier. I think the, the essential truth here is that the Democrats no longer need Joe 
Lieberman, uh, that in fact, before, it, they, they had less of a majority, and his vote was important to them. At this point, as they rack up uh, higher numbers in the Senate, we're not really quite sure what that number is going to be when it's all over. Uh, they look at Joe Lieberman as someone that is expendable, frankly, at this point, as far as his vote is concerned. I, I don't think that means that he won't caucus with them, because I think, in general, that's up to him. Tara, uh, very quickly, Rahm Emanuel, the naming of him to become the White House Chief of Staff under President-elect Barack Obama, what does that say to you? Well, you know, I think it, the jury's still out. I think, you know, obviously uh, many would say he is a, a, a hyper-partisan, if you will, uh, and that uh, in, this, in the spirit of bipartisanship that, that Barack Obama has has talked about. This is uh, one indication of uh, what some would see, many conservatives would see as uh, as clear partisanship and naming a chief of staff who is, at, by, by many accounts, uh, someone who's pretty tough to work with when it comes to par crossing party lines and, and broadening uh, those relations. So, I, you know, look, I, I think it's yet to be seen as he, as he fleshes out uh, the rest of his staff appointments and his cabinet. But uh, so far, uh, it looks like he's sticking, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole theme about, you know, he's gonna, is he going to play nice and share his marbles or keep all those marbles within uh, the Democrat right. control. And, and so we'll see if, so, we're, so far he's kept the first marble. We'll see what he does with the rest. Well, he's already reaching out to the Republicans in a statement that he put out today. I'll read a line for you. He said, I want to say a special uh, word about my Republican <laughs> colleagues who serve with dignity, decency, and a deep sense of patriotism. We often disagree, but I respect their motives. That statement from Rahm Emanuel a little while ago. Guys, Good thanks very much. We'll continue this conversation. Uh, he